amazing. I was talking to some people the other day, and they was like, you doing this on Father's Day? And I said, uh, yeah, well, what's wrong with that? They said, it's Father's Day. I said, so by the time we finish, there ain't going to be no crowded restaurants. You know, I said, we get the same thing every year for Father's Day. We either get a bottle of cologne or a robe. Amen, amen. Time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the sales only last two hours. And we don't have no month and a half sale. And then when you get to the restaurant, it is open seating. So it's Father's Day. Remember that. So it was like, oh, okay, I get you. I get you. In lieu of all of that, God is still good. Because regardless of how we in the flesh treat our fleshly fathers. Amen. We still honor Father Amen. God on Father's Day and every day. Amen. 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 And if you don't get anything, we know that we got Him and He's the gift Amen. that keeps on giving. Amen. 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 I want to thank you all for your prayers. Update with my shoulder. I don't have a torn rotator cuff, but I do have burnt bone spurs. Amen. So I have a big bone spur in the front and one on the side. And it hasn't did anything damaging yet, so they got me in physical therapy for that. And I thank you all for your prayers for last week. I have um, my son, one of my sons that live in Vegas. It's the one I raised. I raised him by myself, just me and him for the first 12 years. And, and, and I guess a phone call that something is wrong, first thing I do is I get up and go check on him. So he's a good kid, and thank God everything turned out okay. That situation at their job, but... Uh, we were security at one of the hotels, and they had a real major incident where a lot of people was hurt, and no one gave me information to say if he was hurt or not, but it was his post, so I had to go and check on my son, and didn't get back in time, but I thank you all for your continual prayers, amen? amen. Uh, wife is still having challenges, she's, she's uh, having, a, she give me all these initials. MRIs, KMCs, CHJs, I don't know, whatever. She got about four of them C's and K's and M's going on this week. Amen. Amen. Um, as she has still had a few episodes of passing out, we just have to find out what's going on with her. So let's continue to keep her lifted in prayer. Papa Ford sends his love. He's not here today. We have a couple of outings this afternoon. He says he his gas tank don't hold as much gas as it used to. Amen. He said he runs out quick, so he said he needed to make sure that he rested himself up a little bit, but he sends his love. Amen? Amen. Amen. And to these musicians, we thank you. We love you. Good to see you, Dr. West. Good to see you, Dr. for a few minutes, let us visit um, the 84th Division of Psalms. Let us go to the 84th Division of Psalms. Meet me there. And I just want to share this little piece of passage with you, if I can. Amen. And I'm asking everyone, too, to please be careful right now. I don't know what this bug or this flu is that's going around, but there are many, many people right now that are getting sick with a cold or getting sick with some form of a flu. Um, be careful. Um, just a word of, of, of wisdom. When you're out, put your mask on. Yes, it's yes. better to be safe than it is. Yes. Be sorry. I had a few people that will wind up coming up with COVID again, but then we have other people that are being sick with colds. It's not COVID, but it's some form of the flu. So please, please, please take care of yourself and plenty of water and keep your mask on. Amen. Psalms 34, 11. Psalms 84, 11. I'm sorry. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord grants favor and honor. He does not withhold the good from those who live with integrity. He does not hold, withhold the good from those who live with integrity. For a few minutes, if I can use as a subject, I just want to use this subject because of God's 
favor. Yes. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's because of his favor that we have what we have. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Father, we thank you now for this time that we have to share. And I ask you, oh God, that you remove me from self, that you may be heard, that when they hear me, they don't hear me, but they hear you. When they see, they don't see me, but they see you. Speak now, Holy Ghost, clearly, that it may enter the hearts, the souls, the minds, and the spirit of those that are listening. And Father God, that it will take effect, that we may move in the way that it pleases you. And you get all of the glory from us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want to point out is this thing called favor. This thing called favor. According to, I have a good friend that I hang out with. and This friend's name is Webster. Uh, Pastor Wes, I think you know, you know that guy. He's a Mr. Webster, I, 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 we, we, we frequently hang out, and, and so I asked him a question, and I said, I said, Webb, uh, what is favor? And he said, from his definition, he said, it's, it's a friendly regard shown towards another, especially by a superior. In other words, he says that, that, that somebody that is higher than you, he actually shows you this special regard because of something that you did. Amen? The other one says, it's a special privilege or right granted or conceded. What I like about Webster is, Webster knows the Lord. If we find out and search Webster, Webster was a Christian himself, that's why... When you look at definitions from Webster, you will find that a lot of the definitions from Webster, from Webster will line up with Scripture. In fact, he will literally give you uh, examples in his definition that are straight, strictly biblically uh, supported. Have I got a witness? And so when he says that, that, that is, it is a friendly regard shown towards another, especially by a superior. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Now, according to the Bible... The Bible's definition of it, or the way the Bible defines it, is 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 is, is, is favor is is a demonstrated delight. Mm -hmm. It's a demonstrated delight. In other words, in other words, it's something that God is doing for you tangibly that you will delight in because of something that you have done to warrant it from Him spiritually. Have we got it? Have you got it? So spiritually, listen, spiritually. When we line ourselves up with what God does or who God is, then favor gets connected to us because of our walk with him. Amen. And, and therefore, from there, he allows us to have this thing called favor. And he demonstrates that through our acts of obedience and our walking in his will. He will demonstrate that tangibly. Amen. The favor of God can be described as tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. Right. Can I give you an example? When you, Josh, apply for a job that you have no experience in, but it interests you, and God allows for favor to rest upon the hiring manager mm. and simply say that there's something about you yes. that's a perfect fit Regardless of what the paper says about your experience. Mm. Because when you are walking in the fullness of who God is, when you are walking in the power of who God is, when you're walking in the obedience of who God is, and God rests favor upon your life, the Bible declares that he will allow favor to be shown amongst men. All right, all right. And it doesn't matter what you qualify for on paper, because when you're walking in the auspice of who God is, you already qualify in heaven. Right. When you qualify in heaven, it automatically says when God is ready to point you in that direction, he will open up the door, and that is called unmerited favor. All right. All right. All right. God's favor, it's also God's extended grace, which brings his unmerited favor. Meaning we don't deserve it, but we do have it. 
Now watch this. God's favor is available for everybody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But everybody don't get it. Have we got a word? God's favor is extended to all. But just because you are a child of God doesn't mean that you are being graced with his favor. Because some of us hold the title, but we do not move in the direction of showing him that we're worthy of his favor. And listen, and when you really line yourself up with God, it ain't just favor, but it's unmerited favor. It's undeserved favor. It's, it's this favor that you couldn't buy even if you had all the money. As a matter of fact, it's favor that helps you get that Rolls Royce next year. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> Mother, be careful how you speak it in the air because God hears it. If you line up, he'll be dropping a whole truck load of She said it in the atmosphere and from that point to on. And she's been doing what God says do it the way he said do it. And he says, well, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to show you how much I appreciate you being who you are. I'm going to touch the heart of the Rolls Royce dealership. And have them drop off not one, but two, three, or four of them. Because of favor, God can do these things. And listen, and the thing is, is we disqualify ourselves by not being obedient to what the word of God tells us. That's right. That's right. That's right. Listen. You can be obedient. Work. We, we, we have to understand that the Bible, I want, and I want to line this up so that you can see what I'm talking about. We say, we say God's favor and how we get God's favor. When you look at the end portion of this passage, it says, he will not withhold any good thing to those from those who live with integrity. Amen. Let me explain this to you. Uh, um, um, it's a difference in between living with integrity and living in integrity. Because if you live in integrity, that means that you can walk out of integrity too. Amen. If I live in, then that means I can put it on anytime I want to and take it off anytime I want to. But if I live with integrity, living with integrity means it becomes a part of my lifestyle. It means it goes with me where I go. It does with me what I do. Because I'm more concerned with how God sees me than I am with how man thinks of me. Because I realize that when I live not just integrity, but I've got to live with godly integrity. We know that integrity is doing right even when nobody is looking. That's, right. That's what man says. Integrity is doing right when nobody is looking. But Josh, I come to mess you up for a few minutes because I don't care who you think ain't looking, there's somebody that's always looking. The Bible says he's like the Lion of Judah. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. Matter of fact, when you creeping late in the midnight hour, he, he's got his eyes on you. Early in the morning, he, he's got his eyes on you. When you are in a, a crowd of nothing but you, he's got his eyes on you. So we can't say doing what's right when nobody's looking. It is doing what's right because he's always looking. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word translated uh, integrity means the condition of being without blemish. Mm -hmm. Completeness or perfection. Sincerity, soundness, uprightness, and wholeness. Integrity in the New Testament simply means honesty and adherence to the pattern of good work. Mm -hmm. When you adhere to the pattern of good work, you must first understand what the Bible says about us working while it is yet day. And when he says working, he's not always talking about plowing the fields. He's not always talking about building the house. But he is talking about reaching the souls. He is talking about ministering the gospel. He is talking about feeding the hungry. He is talking about looking after the widows and the orphans. He is talking about encouraging those that are incarcerated. He is talking about going to the convalescent hospitals and saying something to somebody that was forgotten about. He is saying this is the good work that he's looking for us to do. And how do we do that if we don't live with That's right. That's right. Living with godly integrity says I don't care what man thinks about me as long as it pleases God, I'm in. Yeah. Come on here somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. We had a celebration 
And, and folks were saying, what, is, what colors are we wearing? And what, what are we doing? What are we that? What are we this? And I told them, I said, you know what? For the first time, I see this in a different light. Why are we so focused on what color to wear? Why are we so focused on how this looks and how that looks? Why don't we focus on the purpose by which we celebrate? Because if we focus on how we look, we miss what we're doing and why we're doing it. Have I got a witness? Because if you're too cute to lift up your hands and say amen, then you missed it. Yeah. But when I live with integrity, I say, if all I can come in is a sweatsuit and some house yeah. shoes, I'm there with an open heart to receive what the Lord has for me. Because it's not about what I got on the outside, but it is about what I have. But godly integrity would say, give it your all regardless of what's going on on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. When we think about integrity, the integrity of God is not just a passing function. In fact, it is a godly lifestyle. Mm. We must live this life that represents who God is. Yeah. We must live this life that says we respect and honor the word of God when it comes down to the commandments and all the orders that God has given us to live a godly life before him because I need you to know and understand Chantel, that sometimes we are the only Bible or God that somebody will see and when we put our integrity down just because we want to fit in for a minute the assignment that you have for that one person to see God in you you miss it and that means that now you have to deal with the consequence by compromising instead of walking in full integrity I'm simply saying that there are people that are looking at all of us that you don't know that are looking at you, that are watching everything that you do, that are looking how you talk, watching how you dress, looking at how you interact, and they know that you are a Christian, and the only reason that they got some hope that God can do for them what he's doing for you is by watching you and how you deal with your circumstances. So when you walk in the integrity of God, what happens is you can be cussed out, but you hold your peace and let God fight your battles. You, you can have a little bit, but you'll put your little in the hands of God, and he'll make it much. You'll remember that no matter what my physical situation is, my Bible says that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches. And when I can stand in this integrity, people will look and say, I don't know how you do it, but I want a little bit of what you have. And then you tell them this kind of favor only comes from living with integrity. How do we adhere to the patterns of good works? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. If I expect to live in integrity, I must first acknowledge Him who I am living for. I must acknowledge that I can't do anything without Him but I can do everything with Him. All things are possible with Jesus. But I must have it made up in my mind and I can't just pick up and quote a scripture when I need something. But I've got to read the word of God so that it becomes a pattern in my life. And that my life begins to transform to the living word. Because the living word will lead me, guide me, and direct me to the way God wants me to live. And every single time I want to act up because his word is on the inside of me. Godly integrity appears and say, you know, that's not the thing that you should do. You know, you shouldn't say that. You know, you shouldn't be there. You know, you shouldn't hang out with them. Stop feeling bad because you can't hang out with Pookie Day Day and Sean Sean them no more. They're not where you're going. So sometimes God will bring you away because his favor when he rests in upon you yeah. has to be in a place where they see it from afar. Yeah. Because if they see it too close, they might try to take the credit. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. yeah. According to Matthew 6 and 33, it tells us to do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all things. And then all things. See, what we tend to do when we don't walk in Christian integrity and Godly integrity, we seem to seek our money. We seem to seek our ability. We seem to seek our popularity. We seem to seek favors from other people to try to get what we want. But when we are committed to living with Godly integrity, we don't do nothing without asking God first. The person that I like to reflect to is Jesus. Jesus came down in the form of man. 
So he was all spirit and he was all man. But he never did anything without straying away and seeking God first. He never made a decision without seeking God first. He never laid hands without seeking God first. He never healed without seeking God first. He never spoke without seeking God first because he understood even though I am one with him, as man, I still must show man how to do it from this side of it. And when he did it, he says, if it be thy will. Yes, yes. Amen. Hmm. Because if I'm living in Christian integrity and godly integrity, I must seek him first. Because what I needed to happen is this. Not only do I need it to bring him glory, but I also need it to be extended favor upon me. That somebody else may see the hand of God moving because of my integrity. Oh, man. Come on, Hallelujah. Christian integrity is important. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of God's favor. It was on the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. God's favor rested upon them, and it wasn't them that it literally rested upon, but it rested on it was extended to them because of Moses. Amen. God allowed for this tangible favor yeah. to be shown upon a man that was living. In godly integrity. Mm -hmm. you, you, you say Moses killed the man. He did. Yes. He did. He did it. Hey, it's, no, it's, it's no justifiable reason to say, oh, he did it, but it was because of X, Y, and Z. He, he did it. He did it. But when he got himself, when he was right with God and God sent him back, the Bible says that God used him to speak to an evil king. Yeah. who was not willing to allow these people to go. They, they were in bondage and slavery for three, four hundred years in bondage and slavery but God sent him in to do what? He says, God, I'm of uncircumcised lips. I can't speak to this man. He won't understand what I'm saying. Here goes some favor. Whew. He says, I'm going to send your brother with you because your brother knows what you're saying and since he knows what you're saying, he can tell the king what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. So when he let rest. He let favor rest and God allowed for all of these things to happen for the children of Israel to go. But watch how favor begins to rest. Now I'm running we're leaving and I got the Red Sea in front and I got an army of, of men coming behind me. And the person that God sent that's walking in integrity he says lift up your rod. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard a man tell me a joke mother. He was working on a house Monday. <laughs> and the man came outside and he says when I was Little back in Louisiana, he said, I heard this joke. He said, There was this little boy that went to Sunday school, Reverend. And he came home, and his daddy said, Boy, what you learn in Sunday school today? He said, Well, he said, I learned that it was the children of Israel, they was leaving out of Egypt. And they they built this bridge over the Red Sea. And they went across to the other side, and then they had a pocket full of dynamite. The Pharaoh and them came across the bridge. They blew the bridge up. The Pharaoh and them died in the water. And, and, and his father says, boy, is that what they teaching you in Sunday school? He said, no, but that other story, you wouldn't believe it at all. <laughs> so in other words, but he got the story. So the favor didn't stop there. But the Bible says that the favor continued to extend because when they got hungry, uh, 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 Moses went to God and favor rested upon him because manna began to fall. And, and when they complained about it, they, they didn't want just bread. God, the, the next time he spoke and God allowed favor to come because now it's quail coming down more than they can eat. Every single time the water becoming sweet from being bitter. Every single time there was something going on. God used the person that was walking in Christian integrity, Godly integrity to allow unmerited favor to allow this tangible form of favor to rest on him. Why? Because when you are obedient, favor rests on you, but everybody around you can be impacted. Brother, that's why when you stand flat-footed and say, I'm going to do what I have to do to please God and help keep the doors open, and when he rests favor up on you, it doesn't matter who's down here with you when you're down here. It doesn't matter who's sweeping when you're sweeping. It doesn't matter who's cleaning up the kitchen when you're cleaning up the kitchen. When the favor rests upon you, everyone that's in the proximity of who you are gets a piece of what God has rested upon you, not because they deserve it, but because they are able to see God moving on your behalf. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
maybe that'll help them. So think about it. If we all walked in Christian integrity yes. and God walked and dropped a little bit of favor on you and a little bit on you and a little bit on you and a little bit on you. Think about how much favor rests up in this building. That When people come up in here, it's like the church of, in, in, in the book of Acts, when it gets to talking about how they all came together at this time and laid their possessions down at the feet of the bishops, at the prophets. They laid their feet and there was nobody in the area that had lack because they all came together on one accord. And when God allows for a group of people to have this unmerited favor at the same time, oh my, 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 it shouldn't be nobody in the room that's missing out on anything mentally, physically, spiritually. Come on here. Because God's favor is not granted to everyone, just those that are living according to his will. Noah found favor in the eyes of God in Genesis 6. Because folks talked about him, but he understood who God was. Yes. He understood what God gave him. Yes. And this is where I have we have our problem at in Christianity right now. The moment somebody talk about us, that we feel that we need to walk away from what God has assigned us to do. Yes. But I come to tell you that just like they told us when I was little, man don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Yes. So it don't matter what he say. Matter of fact, most of the time, folks that talking about you, they hating on you because they didn't get called to do what you're doing. Yes. And the Bible says that. That Noah just kept on and kept on building. He didn't, didn't look to the left or the right, but he kept on building using the precise measurements that God gave him to build this thing. And at the day that God said that the flood was getting ready to come, all the people that laughed at him were no more, simply because when God let favor rest, it rested upon him. And he says, get your wife and you get your children and you get two of every animal and then I'm going to put you in this boat and you stay in this boat because this is your survival. I need somebody to understand that when you allow for your integrity to be shown to God God will put you in the belly of his hand in the palm of his hand and I don't care what kind of danger is surrounding you God will keep you safe until he's ready to take you and expand you a little bit more but the thing we've got to do is make sure that we are living with integrity yes. 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 living yes. Joseph had favor when he was so born when he was sold into slavery mm -hmm. He had favor when Pilate, when, when the king's when the king's wife was pushing up on him. He had favor when she lied on him. He had so much favor that he went from the pit to the palace. And from the palace to becoming a ruler. He went from the place of watch why God rest in faith. Listen to his integrity. He had so much godly integrity that when God blessed him to be in a high-ranking position. His brothers, the ones that did him wrong, did not recognize him. But he recognized them. And he could have not given them anything. But the Bible declares that he blessed them, sent them home with some good stuff. And then he identified to let them know who he was. And immediately, what did they say? Oh, hold on a minute. You, you gonna still bless us like that no matter what you did? What we did to you. Yes, sir. God the integrity says, I don't have to hold on to what you did to me. All right, all right. Because my Bible says that if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, yeah. he tells me that he will make my enemies my footstool. Yeah. God lets me know that if I can stand in who he is, yeah. that what they did to me, he'll reap it back, send it back to them seven times greater. Yeah. All I got to do is show God and no matter what goes on. And he says, I'm going to love you in spite of what you did to me because my integrity says, in spite of everything that goes on, my command is to love. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Watch this. You may not see the events, the effects of who God is, how God moves in your life, especially when it comes to other folks coming against you. You may not see it right away. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on living in integrity. Yes, Keep on living yes, with integrity. Mm -hmm. Because when God begins to show some things, it's going to be in 3D where yeah. a big motion picture is going to have Dolby stereo sound. It's yeah. going to have all this color. It's going to take the color. It's going to be all. As a matter of fact, it's even going to include that Rolls Royce. Yes, it is. Yeah. And that you can see it. And you're going to be like, oh my God, look at how God is moving. But it's not going to come when you want it. But when it comes, it's going to be right on time. My job is to do what? Just continue to live with integrity. Regardless of how I feel in my flesh, if I continue to live with integrity, my spirit will tell my flesh that it's going to be alright. Trouble don't last always. We may endure for a night, 
but if I hang on, it's going to be all right. If I start shouting in the middle of what I got going on right now, I won't even realize how troublesome it is because I'm hanging on to this integrity. And God says, God says through David that he'll bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in his mouth. So when I'm living with integrity, my circumstance does not dictate my praise, but my praise does command my circumstance to the power. Because favor will rest upon me oh, even in the midst of hell. Yeah. When I'm living mm. with integrity. Ruth found favor with God for her living with negativity. But she found favor mm. with Boaz. Amen, amen. She was living around. It didn't <laughs> look like things was going to happen. But she kept pushing. Mm -hmm. She kept pushing. She kept serving. And God turned around and blessed her beyond. But listen, the Bible says in this passage of scripture, the Lord grants favor and honor. The Lord grants it to those that are living with, to those, because watch this. He can't give someone favor that misappropriates the position of being granted favor. See, we'll misappropriate the favor that he gives us. We'll start saying that it was something that we did within ourselves. Mm. If it, man, my talent, my gift, my this, that, that. No, 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 baby. If God's favor allowed you, I don't care how good of a singer or rapper or drawer or, or, or architect or whatever. If God's favor is not on your life, you are not going to walk into the big light because that's not what God's will is for your life. But when favor lines up, with, well, when your integrity lines up with God's favor because of God's will, then God's open up door to what the plan is for your life. And God is not going to give you more than you can have simply because he already understands that I can give you enough favor to help be a blessing to someone else, but I'm not going to give you the kind of favor that's going to wind up making you walk away from you. All right. All right. All right. Have I got a witness? Uh -huh. When we look at this, he says, he says that the Lord gives favor, he grants favor and honor. I don't know about you, but everything we do should honor God and, 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 and his fullness of who he is. Hallelujah. But when the master creator can grant you something and honor you, mm -hmm. and all you got to do is live with yes, uh, He says, I'm going to grant you favor and honor. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to withhold anything that's good from you yes. as long as you're living mm -hmm. with integrity. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to catch that. Mm. Because you don't have to live with popularity. Just live with integrity. You don't have to live with having 1.5 million friends on Facebook. Just live with integrity. You don't have to live with having the fanciest car on your block. Just live with integrity. You don't have to live and have the biggest house on the block. Mm. Just live with integrity. You don't have to be the boss on your job. But I, I, come, I guarantee you that if you live with integrity, he'll show you favor to have your own company. Be your own boss. Because that's the kind of God I serve. But what does it require? It requires me to live with integrity. It requires me to honor God with everything that I do. It requires me to salute him no matter what my situation is. It requires me to bless him at all times. It requires me to stay in my word regardless if I'm going through something or not. But I understand that when I read the Bible, the words of life begin to jump out at me and help me to make it through these things. Pastor West, I'm telling you right now that you got so much word in you and God is going to Endowed you with so much of his anointing. Yeah. And I'm letting you know that favor rests, unmerited favor rests upon your life. Yeah. And today I'm sharing with you that you have the power in your hands yeah. to rest upon every aching part of your body yeah. and command it in the name of Jesus and by the yeah. blood of Jesus yeah. that the pain must subside and go away. Yeah. And you declare that in the name of Jesus yeah. by the power of the Holy Ghost and watch the unmerited favor of God rest upon you. I'm not saying you get ready to go out there and be dunking on the basketball court and that you get ready to race these young boys up and down the street. I ain't saying all of that. And if you do that, don't be blaming me saying that I said, I didn't say that. I said, rest your hands upon yourself and declare that I am healed in the name of Jesus, that this pain must subside because your life exemplifies you living with integrity, with godly integrity, 
And for that, God says, my I've never a favor rests upon your life. And that is a tangible fact that God will allow someone to see. Rest your hand on your back, on your legs, upon your stomach. And you say in the name of Jesus. By the power and the blood of God. Yes, Lord. I declare that you will fall subject to the power. Yes of this favor that rests upon my life. Yes. I wish I had a witness. Yes. Daniel found favor. Yes. It was because of God's favor that Daniel found favor while he was laying Josh in a den with three hungry lions. Yes. Yes. How is it that you got these lions in this wow. den that are hungry before I got there? Yes. Yes. They're chilling while I'm there. Yes. And then got hungry again when I left. Yes. It ain't nothing but God's favor. Yes. I said, the folk that told on me, now you got to go where I just came from. Yes. And the results ain't going to be the same. Yes. Yes. Daniel got up and came on out. And it says that when they threw the, the, the perpetrators in, yeah. they threw them in, and before they could hit the bottom of the den, yeah. that the lions had all them up. Nothing hit the bottom but the bones. I, I, I come back. Ain't that kind of ironic that Daniel was just up there laying on the lions, chilling, talking to the lions? What's up, what was that? And y'all laying everything good. Slapping high five with the lions. They wasn't hungry yeah. when he was there. Why? Because yeah. the tangible effect of God yeah. was in the midst of what was going on. God kept the lions' mouth closed, made him respect not Daniel, but he respected the power of God that was in Daniel, that was on Daniel because of Daniel's living with integrity. I come by to tell you that even when danger is around you, the Bible says he'll keep you free and safe from danger, seen and unseen. You walk in this favor, when you walk in this integrity, God will do some things to you that no man will ever. The three Hebrew boys. They told him, they said, yeah, 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 yeah. My integrity says, kill me if you want to. Amen. amen. For the sake of God, because whether he saves me or not, I know where I'm going. Amen. I wish I had some made up mind Christians amen. like that that would sit back and say, it don't matter what I don't got. It's all about what I do got. Amen. Amen. I ain't got to walk this earth no more unless God say I'm going to walk this earth. Hang on with us. And the Bible says that when he threw him in, he turned it up seven times. Did y'all check this story out? He turned up the furnace seven times higher to throw the boys in. And the Bible says that the men that went to go throw them in got too close to the furnace and died throwing them in because they were too close. But yet I still, how do you die and I still wind up making it into the fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Yeah. How is it still so hot that now God cooled it off enough for Nebuchadnezzar to look in? The, the reason why is because he needed Nebuchadnezzar to see what favor looked like. Yeah. 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 He looked through the window. He said, three of them went in. All my men is dead. But four of them is walking around. What the world is going on? I need you to understand that the intangible evidence of who God was were resting upon them. And now Nebuchadnezzar left them out and says, I don't know. What's going on? But we're going to serve they God. Because it's something about the power of God when it rests upon you. And the favor of God when it rests upon your obedience. Your enemy will look and say, I'm sorry. I need to back up, retract, and do this thing all over again. Y'all was worshiping me. Not no more. We're going to worship their God. Oh, I wish I had somebody. God showed favor with David when Saul was trying to kill him. But how you look at this is David was living with integrity mm -hmm. because he never got the order that he needed to kill Saul yeah. Amen. for trying to kill him. Yeah. But the Bible says that God allowed for him to escape the attacks. Amen. Huh? He escaped the attacks that Saul had. And it was because of God's favor that he was able to, it, it cracked me up when the Bible says that he, he, he was standing over Saul. Mm -hmm. At the position where he could have just, hey, can I use this word? He shanked, he could have shanked him. <laughs> but because of living with integrity, the Bible, the spirit of God that, 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 that David was identifying with says, this is not your fight. Right. To back up, Saul looks up and see this boy standing up. The first thing he thought is, he, he, he's about to kill me. But because of God's favor, God allowed for David to walk away. Are you listening to me? Because what God had in store for Saul was far greater than anything that David could have did. Right. And when you walk in favor, watch this, and you move away from the physical attack on you, God's favor rests upon you will keep you moving higher while he takes care of your... Come on. Your amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Cedar Grove, mm. the doors are still open because yes, favor. Hallelujah. Rest in the place. Mm -hmm. 
Watch this. The favor of that man was so strong that everybody in here now reached the benefit of his favor. And his exemplified act of, 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 of integrity should continue to be carried on so that God's favor, the same favor that rested upon him, will continue to rest and reside on you. Because at the end of the day, God just wants us to live with his integrity. At the end of the day, God just wants to bless you. Yes. Yes, and he don't want to withhold any good thing. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, God wants you to understand that it's because of his faith mm. that you're walking like you're walking. Amen, amen. That you're talking like you're talking. It's because of his faith that people, when they walk by, they remember something about what happened in here years ago that he'll get them to where they are today. Yes, it's because of his faith. Oh, I wish I had a witness of it here. It's because of God's faith mm. that rests upon our lives right now. You don't know how many people's lives have changed mm. because you walked in the room yes. and the presence of God was on you. And, and it, it was powerful enough to change whatever decision mm. that person was about to make. Mm. You don't know how many people you walked past that was about to commit suicide. Mm. Yeah. But the Spirit of God was resting upon you so when you walked by, they felt a peace that they had never felt before. Yes. You may not identify with everything that God has done yes, sir. for you and through you because of His favor. Yes. But baby, let me tell you, just keep on living with integrity. Amen. It's because of God's favor that you will continue to soar, that you'll continue to climb, that you'll continue to meet God in the sky on this great getting up morning. It's because of his favor that you're able to lift your hands and say hallelujah. It's because of his favor. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't miss his unmerited favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you choose to live in integrity. <laughs> Rather than living with it. Yeah. All right, all right. It's because of God's favor. Come on, yeah. let's put our hands together. God's favor. Yes. It's a song that says, Your grace and mercy yeah. brought me through. Yes. 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 If it wasn't for you, Jesus, I don't know what I would do. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes, indeed. Grace and mercy. Yes, yes. Brought us through. Yes, yes. The favor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Lord. Kept us going. Yes, Lord. Huh? Yes, Lord. Yes. Your grace and mercy. Yes. Your grace and mercy.
for living with godly integrity. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Because of your favor. Thank you, Lord. We have things that we don't deserve because of your favor. Yes. We have things that we can never imagine that we were fit for because of your favor. Yes. And we know, God, that you're not finished with us yet. Yes. So we thank you, our name and you. With all eyes closed and heads bowed, this is a time in the service where if you don't know God for the pardon of your sins, or you want to rededicate your life, just simply raise your hands where you are and say, I'm going to get my life right with God. Yes. We'll accept him for the first time. Amen. And the next call is for if you want to join, become a member of the body of Christ of Cedar Grove of Cornerstone. Mm -hmm. You simply raise your hands and say, I'd love to be a part of a body of Christ that is growing, thriving, and striving to be what God called them to be. Yes. Amen. As we see, there's none that's still going at the cross. We thank you, God. We thank magnify you, Lord. Our thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let us prepare for our love offering and then. If it was Mother's Day, I'd say I let y'all out so y'all.